Um, our next speaker uh, is Dan Fletcher uh, from uh, Berkeley. Uh, he represents bioengineering, and his presentation will be on uh, cell scope uh, for mobile microscopy. All right. Thanks very much, Ravi, and, and it's a pleasure to be here. So the, the project I'll be talking about is um, one that's a, a very recent one, and it's an out, uh, outshoot of a course that, um, where, where the challenge of creating a microscope that would be compatible with a cell phone and allow you to deliver microscopic images anywhere a cell phone message can reach um, <clears throat> was a design problem for, for a class. And it, it turned out um, that it was an eminently doable um, problem. And so we set out to, uh, to, to demonstrate this and to examine how, um, how this could be useful. And so this is a project that, uh, that I've been working on with, with Ravi and with uh, two graduate students who are here, um, David Breslauer and Mike Rosenbluth. And uh, they have uh, um, uh, been looking into the various ways in which uh, mobile microscopy might be useful. The majority of my lab looks at how um, microscopy can be used to examine uh, cell movements and, and cell mechanics. And um, the, the, the number of microscopy techniques that have been um, used in the past decades have been increasing. Fluorescence techniques, phase contrast techniques, differential interference contrast. Um, and, and you can see that the uh, research microscopes have been getting larger and larger and larger. Uh, but but um, at the same time, the capabilities of uh, CMOS sensors and of microfabricated optics have been getting better and better and better. So there have been, both directions have been increasing. And what we are hoping to do in this project is to investigate um, the extent to which uh, relevant contrast mechanisms can be shrunk down to the size that they would be uh, appropriate for uh, use in a cell phone type context. And one of the, the key motivations for this is um, that uh, in many regions of the developing uh, world, the access to healthcare is is quite limited, and the ability to um, take to separate the data collection from the data analysis uh, would, much as telemicroscopy, uh, telemedicine is doing uh, in this country, would be would be very useful in in developing countries. Um, and while cell phone towers may be available, uh, good um, uh, uh, good. Internet connections are, are certainly not available in, in many locations. And so uh, the capability of, um, of adding microscopy to um, the capability of a cell phone um, would have advantages in detection of some sets of diseases that rely on microscopy for diagnosis. And so an example of that might be uh, malaria, where identification of the parasite in a blood sample um, is, is uh, the gold standard for um, knowing that a uh, patient has, has malaria. So, so how can this be done? How can we um, add uh, components to a cell phone? Beautiful um, pictures can be taken now of audiences this size, but um, how about smaller objects? And so our concept for that is, is relatively simple, and that is to uh, design um, a set of lenses that uh, convert the, um, uh, the, the large, the normally large object that uh, most cell phone cameras are designed to, to take pictures of um, into um, a, a more like a microscope. And so we've, we've gone through a few different iterations of a device and, and, and we've brought one here today that is relatively uh, compact, uh, clipped into um, uh, a normal cell phone, uh, cell phone holder um, and allows us to take magnified images, uh, capture those images, and, and send them. And in, in combination with that, um, and, and critical to, to many types of microscopy, are proper control of illumination. And so um, uh, the kinds of contrast that one can obtain in research type microscopes um, uh, is going to be a challenge to get those onto a smaller scale. But for, for a relatively simple set of, of questions, um, uh, reflected light and transmitted light um, can, can easily be implemented in this kind of format. And so that's what we've been targeting. So the design would look something like this, um, in which uh, a set of objectives, objective-like um, uh, system, set of lenses rather, um, uh, transfers the, the object into the, the same CCD or the same CMOS sensor um, that is used right now to collect pictures. Um, part of the motivation for being able to, uh, to do this um, is the expanding cell phone coverage in developing countries. While that's a relatively um, simple thing to do uh, here, uh, developing countries have more and more and more access to wireless networks. Um, and uh, the increase in access to wireless networks is not mirrored by the increase 
and access to healthcare. And so there may be a way of using this wireless access to improve the reach of healthcare. And again, through the, the very simple um, uh, taking of images. Um, and we've, we've tried to break up the ideas of how to use microscopy in this format into high magnification and low magnification applications. Uh, so in, uh, in, in for high magnification applications, these would be ones in which magnification of blood cells is critical for diagnosis. So in the case of malaria, um, and that's, a, that's a, a, at, at magnifications for our system on the, on the scale of, of 60 times or so. Uh, and then there are low magnification um, applications as well, where uh, the, first, um, the, the first pass of uh, evaluation of, of an individual might simply be uh, getting an image of an infected um, uh, wound or um, being able to look at uh, an ear infection or a throat infection. Um, and those kinds of, of images could have initial screening value. But again, the, the combination of microscopy with wireless access could let the evaluation take place in a, an entirely different location. And so um, with the, the increase in, in wireless coverage, um, we hope to, uh, to take advantage um, of the, the growing number of types of contrast that it can be shrunk down, the increase in number of, uh, of, of um, applications for microscopy in disease diagnosis and combine them onto a very simple platform. And so the, the opportunities for collaboration that, uh, that we see are uh, disease target identification. So again, we're developing um, something of a platform, and we have a few ideas for where we'd like to initially apply it. But um, uh, uh, individuals from the health center here would have a much better um, perspective on where technologies like this could be implemented. Um, uh, we need to know that the, the technology we're developing is useful for uh, evaluating uh, samples. Um, so uh, comparison testing, um, a sample um, uh, investigated by a research level microscope and then compared to the image we can obtain on our system and can those, are those uh, images equivalent? That would need to be a, um, a test we run before something like this could be implemented. Um, and then uh, usage, how, how simple and easy to use is a system like this? In order for images to make it into the electronic records of patients, software needs to be developed that allows for back and forth flow of information. Images to be added to a patient file, questions about those images sent back to the uh, individual who's capturing the images or taking the, uh, the patient history. Um, so that back and forth uh, um, of information is going to be uh, critical. Um, and then applications potentially outside of healthcare. Uh, Ravi's had some interesting ideas uh, when it comes to agriculture and other uh, applications where, again, images and image content is critical for deciding on what to do or diagnosing disease. So uh, with that brief introduction, I'll, I'll um, stop and love to answer questions. And if afterwards you want to play with our, our uh, prototype device, um, you're welcome to. Thank you. This is pretty exciting uh, development. Um, <clears throat> I'm wondering how you uh, deal with one of the problems that, that pathology has had for, uh, telepathology has had uh, for a long time is, is figuring out which, which high resolution samples of the slide to transmit, yeah. or are you able to transmit the whole thing? Well, yeah, great question. So the amount of bandwidth that's available is going to be limited. And so one wants to judiciously send images and perhaps not all of them. Um, so I, I don't think we have any easier um, uh, uh, problem. Uh, that, that problem hasn't been solved for this case any more than it has with telepathology. So uh, the same sort of challenges exist. There are uh, certainly growing attempts at image recognition software to help accept or reject images. I think something like that could be implemented as well. Um, but uh, uh, knowing which image to send is, is certainly going to be um, a challenge. I mean, ideally, one hopes that the growth of bandwidth is sufficient that you have to be less and less uh, restrictive on, on what can be sent. Um, and so uh, thinking 10, 15, 20 years out, maybe that is less of a, a problem. Maybe that uh, um, decision about which is the right image uh, could be done um, uh, by, the, by the actual evaluation, by the clinician, as opposed to having to be done on the front end. But right now, we don't have any, any uh, um, advantage in that department. Uh, 
uh, this system uh, actually uh, did you make uh, you know actual working prototype? Uh, uh, yes. Okay. Um, then the, are you using the existing pinhole lens of the Seraphon? So in the in the existing device that we've we've tested, we've taken that lens out, Take which on. simplifies things. I see. Um, um, th there. Uh, we have worked on um, a system that we can simply clip on to an existing mm. lens and accommodate yeah. that lens. Yeah, because I thought you know, if you're keeping the existing lens, you know, the resolution might be not, not so good. Um, it, uh, we've, we've, it turns out field of view seems is, is substantially reduced by leaving that lens in. Okay. Um, the, the image resolution is, is yeah. still quite good. But, and uh, uh, how you could you know, find you know, a particular uh, portion of the slide, what we, we need to see? So, so um, in the case of malaria, for example, the World Health Organization has very standardized procedure for, for how a health worker would look through a slide. And um, it, it's based on the idea that, that you will take a set number of, of fields of view. Uh, you won't necessarily be um, searching for a single thing. And then you, you, you look at those fields of view to evaluate the frequency of the parasite. And, and so I think a similar procedure would have to be implemented for a device like this, where you would be taking a series of fields of view and then evaluating whether those images had or did not have the, the parasite. So normally, the, how many pictures do we have to take? So in the case of malaria, I think it can be quite large. So 100, 100 uh, fields of view, I think, is the, is the standard. Um, again, this brings up exactly the same question before, which is can, can you do initial rejection? So in the case of um, uh, uh, malaria, uh, based on the staining, can you identify that this is an image worth looking at and this other image which has none of the stain showing up is not worth looking at. Okay. Uh, how question is, uh, is your data delay tolerant, meaning can I wait for three minutes or an hour or five hours? I, I, I would think so. I think it's going to be case dependent. But um, if, if you're doing a screening for a set of individuals in some remote village um, and uh, you have at least some identifying information for those individuals, um, being able to collect the, those images send them off whenever cell phone coverage is available, and then get them back you know, in, a, in a day or so uh, would allow you to give reasonably timely advice on what to do, what that patient should do. Um, so uh, I, I don't think there's a requirement in, in, it would certainly be convenient if you could get feedback in, in, in immediately, but the clinician may not be available to read the, the images for some period of time. So I think it's fine for there to be a temporal disconnect between when the image is taken, when it's evaluated, and when information gets back. But that will, of course, be dependent on the specific condition evaluated. I see. So if actually it's delay tolerant, I think there are a lot of techniques can be used to help transmit a larger amount of data. Great. Yeah. Then we need to talk to you. <laughs> Thank you.